Does American art represent the ideals of the American people? Is it national? Is it modern? Is it living? Has it any connection with what we are all doing and thinking and hoping? Does it have any lesson, inspiration, or influence? These insistent questions were posed by a critic of New York Independent in the winter of circa 1907. Nearly 100 years later, critics and scholars continue to question the nature of American art. Thanks for joining me for another book, y'all. That, that was some words from Lynn Martison Atlas, the curator of the exhibition of which this book is representing. Uh, the exhibition, In Private Hands, 200 Years of American Painting, um, was shown at the Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts, which is located in downtown Philadelphia. I went to school here for my master's degree, visited this painting by Benjamin by Benj by Benjamin West quite a bit. It's really big. It's a really nice, big, expansive painting. Um, I think it's something like 176 by, yeah, 301 inches. Really huge painting. Um, that one's actually in their permanent collection there at the museum. This book is showing 200 years of painting from, oh, this one's in their permanent collection as well, The Fox Hunt. Uh, so all these at the front are just in their permanent collection at the museum or they're representing this is just kind of going through all of the stuff that they have there at the museum and then and it relates to stuff also in the philadelphia museum of art um shows a couple of those images and whatnot and um then it gets into the actual show that this book is intended on representing uh, there's a lot of acknowledgments here, obviously, giving thanks to everyone that had a part in putting the show together, um, thanking the Board of Trustees and everybody that decided to give some money or, you know, contribute by working, preparatory or whatever you want to call it, um, while this show was being organized and put on. If you think about the magnitude of this show, um, all of these works are coming from private collections from all over the country, to be honest. I mean, we have one painting that is from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. And then, you know, other paintings that come from Washington, D.C. And other paintings that are right there in Philadelphia. So, and lots of other ones that don't even list their location they just say private location or you know such and such collection so all of these works are coming from private collections just spread across the country and there's a lot of logistics that go into organizing something like this and getting all the works there and having them on loan for a certain amount of time and making sure that they're insured for a certain amount of time and making sure that they're well taken care of and well shown and well respected and um, there's just a lot that goes into putting a show like this together. So I'm glad that there was a catalog that was made off of it so that folks like you and myself can enjoy the show, even though we might not have been able to visit the show. If you do ever get a chance to go to the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts, um, look on the building outside and you might see a familiar face. I had the opportunity to be photographed in my studio while I was painting there. And um, now they use it for one of their main manners to represent the school and potentially, you know, get more students. Hopefully the students that look like me. So we get a, a good wide range of American painting here. A lot of landscape painting. Um, but it also includes a lot of abstract works as well. This one here is the one that's shown on the cover, and it's by Charles DeMuth, um, who was a student at the Academy in 1905 until 1910. That painting is called Jazz, also known as Jazz. Measures 20 by 16 inches, so it's not a very large painting, but pretty impactful with the colors and the organic nature of the really inorganic shapes that are included in the painting. 
Um, it goes, the book goes on to show quite a bit. This is a nice one from Horace Pippin uh, that's in, that was included in the show. It's called John Brown Reading His Bible. It's funny, my book is uh, falling apart over here. The pages seem to come out a little bit, but it's quite all right. I try to keep it lined up and still in the same order. I feel like the order that they're in the, arranged in the book might have something to do with how they were shown in the museum. That might not be the case, but um, either way, this is a really exciting show. I can only imagine going through the halls of the museum and seeing such a variety of work. Nice Robert Motherwell right there. Nice Milton Avery right there. Nice Ellen Frankenthaler right there. I mean, it's just, if you can imagine seeing all of these works, you know, in one museum visit, that's pretty phenomenal and if you ask me like if I was a student at the school at the time I would have been down there in the museum basically almost every day I mean when I was going to the academy I did visit the museum quite a bit it's a wonderful resource to have um, as such a historic museum right across the plaza from where your studio is at it's a nice Richard Diebenkorn there Richard Liebencorn gets some colors, I swear. Well, this is a nice uh, Ramir Burden. I saw a couple of Ramir Burden works in Philly when I was there. I always love his collage um, techniques. I mean, they, they're so painterly, but, you know, there's no paint. <laughs> Just collage on paper. This one measures 13 and a half by 17 and a half inches. So, packs a powerful punch in a small package. Nice Philip Gust in there. Alice Neal, you know Basquiat in the show. Basquiat was one of the uh, artists that really inspired me to start painting um, when I was pretty young as an artist, when I was a young artist. It's Eric Fischel here. Eric Fischel's uh, paintings always kind of like <laughs> rub me in a really strange way. It's just the postures that he has his models get into, uh, but I think that's his intent to um, provoke a little uncomfortableness, un uncomfortableness, <laughs> um, uncomfortableness into the uh, viewer. These Wayne Thubode, uh paintings always make me want some donuts or some cake. This is a nice Robert Colescott. Um, I didn't really know too much about Robert Colescott until I arrived at the Academy. I remember one of my favorite uh, mentors introduced me to Colescott's work. Um, and I just really vibed with it. That was a lot of painting energy. I saw one Robert Colescott in person when I visited the National Museum, I think it was, in Washington, D.C. So that's the uh, book. Obviously back here is just a lot of, um, this is a long index of the works that are included in the book and index of illustrated works of art and that's uh, pretty much it. A few uh, just photo credits and copyright information. And that's the book. Um, like I said, this is a book that I got from the school that I went to. So it kind of means a, a little bit more to me, I guess, than some other books. But I um, hope you enjoyed watching and seeing what is on what was on view at the Academy. Thanks for joining again. Thank you for um, watching this video on another book. I really do appreciate every view that I get. So um, please stay tuned for the next one. If you don't mind just liking the video, subscribing to it uh, if you want to. So that way you can be notified when I do the next one. If you have a video or you, if you have a book that you want me to do, then please let me know. And I'll see if I can acquire it if I don't have it already. Um, that book I just did was actually requested by someone, so hope they enjoyed it. If you, um, uh, okay, that's it.